Hello there people, welcome back to The Break. My name is Patricia Bright. We're here providing you the tools to learn, grow, navigate life like a boss and make some money in the process. I wanted to give you the six things that I have found to be essential to make me be more productive. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I am the most productive person in the world. I will tell you, I have bouts of productivity and creativity and I'm like, yes, I've hit it. Yes, I've done it. Yes, I've achieved. And there's times where I haven't. And when I remember these things, I can tell you that I can smash any and everything out of the park. And now that I'm gonna do a video about it, I hope I will refer to this video more regularly to make sure that I remain productive. So if any of you guys are out there struggling with just getting stuff done, producing the output that you wanna produce, this video is gonna be for you. So my first tip is to plan the day, hour by hour, the night before. Don't wake up in the morning and be like, right, Today I'm gonna do X, Y, Z, Z, whatever. At that point in time, you've already used your, a lot of your brain cells and you probably won't achieve what you wanna achieve. I, for me, have found that when I schedule what I'm going to do the night before, it's like I sleep on it, my mind processes it, and I wake up and I'm ready to go. The amount of energy it takes to actually think about what you wanna do is a lot, you know. It's like the brain is worrying, and I'd much rather spend that energy the night before and sleep on it than on the day that I need to get stuff done. I usually spend about 15 to 20 minutes with my notepad and pen in the bed saying, right, well, what do I wanna achieve? How long is it gonna take me to achieve it? And when am I gonna do it within my day? So there's certain things that I need to try and do automatically, like get the kids ready, get out of the house, maybe exercise, and then I might have a phone call, and then I might have a meeting, and then I need to get a certain video filmed, a certain video edited. I hate thinking about that on the day, in the time. I'd much rather have a plan for it that works for me, that isn't in the moment, done before and when I wake up it's like right I can get straight to action because I've put the thought process in already. Having my day clearly thought out, clearly processed, takes away any pontification, any pondering, any rubbing of my chin like hmm what do I need to do next? All of that is out of the way because I've done a plan and I'm ready to go. It honestly makes a huge difference to my time and I find that when I don't do this my day kind of runs away from me because I don't realize how much time I should be spending on things and I also don't have a clear perspective on what I actually wanna produce for the day and thus I'm an unproductive bum. If you wanna be productive, honey, you're gonna to need to remove distractions out of your life. A lot of us think we're so strong, we can handle it, we can do it, it's fine. I can have my phone right here buzzing away every notification in my eyeballs. Yeah, I can have that phone call, eat that sandwich, watch that little bit of Netflix. I can do all of that and get work done, sure. No, you can't do it. Getting rid of distractions is essential in terms of becoming productive. And there's a lot of tools that are out there can, that can actually help you. So for instance, I do not look at my emails in the middle of the day. Why? Because if you respond to an email, a new email's coming and your mind is taking off what you need to do. So I use something called Inbox Pause or Boomerang. It stops all the new emails coming in and then it sends the people who sent me an email like a notification that says, hi, my inbox is paused. I'll get back to you at a later time. And even mentally knowing that, emails are not coming through, makes me feel a little bit more relaxed and I can turn my inbox pause off and all the emails come and I can deal with them at a set time. So I also delete apps from my phone. This is so I can stop impulsively checking what's going on. Twitter, I don't need you. Instagram, I don't need you. I don't need every single notification. And just by deleting the app, I add a little bit more friction so I don't automatically just press it out of reflex, which a lot of us do. But if the app isn't there, I can't do it and I can't end up being distracted. I also use a tool called Freedom, which allows me to set a window of time at a certain time to be able to use the internet. It sounds crazy, but it works. So I'll set between four and five, 
I can go on this website. And it means that when I'm on the website or I'm on the internet, I'll be quick, I'll get what I need to get, I'll check what I need to check, because it's like on a timer, and as soon as it hits the timer, it disconnects, and it's like, sorry, blocked for a period of time. I love it because it allows me to keep focused and not be distracted. Trust me, you probably think you have the willpower of an ox that you've got this, but putting physical ways to stop yourself being distracted is a game changer when it comes to being more productive. You guys don't know that all these apps, all these software, all these websites that you are on scrolling, they are made by experts who literally go and study psychology to work out how to keep you on their platform for even longer because they make more money from advertisers the more you're literally on their site scrolling and being distracted and rather than it control you you need to learn how to take control people next is learn to prioritize do not confuse busy with being productive I repeat, do not confuse being busy with being productive. You know when you see people like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm so busy, but there's nothing but dust at the end of the day. There's no output. Why is there a zero at the end of the day? Why is there nothing on the plate? Why is there no productivity? What's your output? And I had to learn this a lot that I'll be doing a lot of things, but I wasn't receiving the result that I wanted. I started to see that I was busy all the time, all the time, all the time. And it's like my output was not what I wanted it to be. And I had to learn to take a step back and prioritize what I wanted to do. And for me, it was as simple as saying when I did my plan, like I define what is the output I wanted to achieve? What do I want to have done? What's the physical thing I have at the end of the day? And I might just have two things that are, are an output. Rather than having a list of 10 things I wanted to achieve, I cut it down to like two or something small, but that builds up. There's loads of things we kind of need to do. I need to do the washing up. I need to do the laundry. I need to go shopping. I need to buy this thing here. I've got an answer to this email. Learning to do the task that might have been a little bit harder um, might take a little bit more time, but had the biggest impact was the task that I would do first. And a lot of us, we actually will pick the task that we can tick off really quickly. Like, oh, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. That's the easy task. But the big task that actually helps you lead to your long-term goal, that big cement block brick that helps you build the house, has it been done? The thing that I've learned to do is to pick the most important task that has the most value, even if it takes longer, even if it's harder, even if it takes more brain power, I do that task first. And if I can achieve that one task, I've been successful because it takes one task day after day after day after day to get to the goal that I want to achieve. All those other little activities that I do are probably not gonna get me that final result. So I focus on that and make it a priority. The next steps when it came to improving my productivity was getting to grips with Parkinson's law and making it work for me. Now, if you don't know what Parkinson's law is, it's this concept that basically time is ever expanding. If you give something a certain amount of time to work with, it's gonna take you that amount of time to achieve something. And that's what happens, it just grows. Have you ever studied for an exam? You've had a whole month to study. Meanwhile, it's only in the last day and a half that you've actually studied for the exam. Have you ever had a deadline for work to achieve? And for some reason, in the last hour, you get, are able to get everything you need to get done, done. Yeah, guys, that's Parkinson's law. It's the idea that if, it's, if you have a set amount of time to take, it's gonna take you that amount of time to do it. And so I learned to give myself time boxes to achieve something. By doing this, I got stuff done. Rather than everything taking me forever, like say editing a video, I would take like three days to edit a video that actually could be done in four hours if I just sat down for four hours to do it. So to put this in practice, the power lies in creating your own deadlines that are shorter than usual. You're basically putting yourself under your own pressure. You have to be your own manager. Set a time in your head, write it down on a piece of paper, put a clock next to you, have a ticking timer if you need to, but put that there to make yourself achieve a task that you wanna achieve and be more productive. That will force you psychologically to just get it done. You'll be so surprised 
eyes to see how much more productive you can be by setting yourself your own imaginary timeline that is shorter than normal. Oh, this one. This is this is something that has taught me a lot and it's to be self-auditing. Not in a way that is critical, but in a way which is reflective. Some of us can be very, very hard of our, ourselves and saying, oh, we haven't done this, I haven't done this, I failed at this, yada, yada, yada. And it can be a bit debilitating, but rather than being debilitating, use that information to make yourself better. At the end of the day, have a recount. What have I achieved? What is my output? What's gone right? What's gone wrong? There's so many ways that you can reflect on what you might be doing in a day that isn't making you the most productive. And if you do this on a regular basis, you'll be able to see that there are days where you're absolutely on fire, killing it. Wow, girl, you're doing amazing. And there are days where you just didn't kill it. But if you audit your day, you might be able to see this is what went wrong. I started off on the wrong foot. You have to self audit to look at what's going right and also what's going wrong so you can then recreate what works well all the time. You can be brutally honest but not self critical and then what you're able to do is take that information from how you understood how your day went and apply it for the days or the weeks to follow as well. Finally, be accountable. I actually think this is one of the most important steps. I feel like if you have got people around you who want the best for you and you want the best for them, you kind of work together as a team. I have like WhatsApp groups with my friends. Now these are about our body, to be honest. Like we've got this thing called Ready for the Road. Like. <laughs> Long story, we want to go to a carnival and we're all going to get our bodies right. So we've got this group called Ready for the Road. We send pictures of what we're eating, if we've gone to the gym, all that kind of thing. And um, you can do the same thing when it comes to being more productive in life. It's okay to share with someone you care about or someone that you're comfortable with, with some of the things that you want to do, what you want to achieve. Let them know. And then if you haven't achieved it, if you haven't got there, They'll say, how's it going? What's going on with that? You're gonna have that friend who's gonna be able to cheer you on and encouraging you as you're doing what you're doing, but also pull you up if you are going off track. And I feel like having that accountability partner, because you don't wanna fail them, it gives you a little bit more of an oomph to get something done. Because a lot of the time, people will work hard for other people and they don't work as hard as they need to for themselves. Because you can get away with failing yourself but if you feel like you might be failing someone else or they believe in you you might work a little bit harder and be more productive and as they say iron sharpens iron okay find that person in your team who's going to make you be great and more productive okay guys thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed that and some of these tips you could use to become more productive if you do use them let me know make sure you're following us on the break and also i want to know what do you guys do when you're in a slump or when you're not getting stuff done let me know what some of your productivity hacks are but in the meantime i will catch you all later thanks for watching guys bye